Zigzag and One, a place where we honestly discuss how to embrace the zigs and the zags in our crazy lives. Running away is not an option. Living in defeat is not an option. Instead, learning how to keep moving forward is what we'll do together, one nugget of wisdom at a time. Your host is Melanie Brown. She's navigated a few zigs and zags in her life with the determination to never give up. Expect great stories and lots of laughs. Are you ready? Let's do it. Welcome to the pre-launch episode of Zigzag and One. I'm Melanie. We've been working on launching this podcast for the last few months, so I'm ready to kick it off with this episode. And guys, today... I have my friend Avery here with me. I've known her since she was a little girl, but for the last seven years, I've had the honor of being a mentor and friend to this amazing young woman. We've journeyed life together and faced our fair share of zigzags. And let's be clear, our relationship is not just one-sided. Supporting and encouraging each other are what makes our relationship so awesome. Avery, thank you for helping me kick off the Zigzag in One podcast. Mel, thanks for asking me. I have loved following and being a part of your Overcomer ministry these last six years. You've interviewed some absolutely incredible women. The lessons learned and advice in those stories have really helped me as well when I face any struggle that I've gone through. So... When we met so long ago, I used to call you Miss Brown, um, and for <laughs> yes, you years did. and years, you would get on to me for calling you Miss Brown and not calling you Mel. Um, and probably, I guess, about seven years ago, um, we were at a sermon at church, and they talked about sticky faith. And I remember after that, you walked up to me, and you are like, well, you're stuck with me. And I have been amazingly stuck with you ever since then. And I am Um, so glad you have. I love you, Avery. I love you. I love you. (laughs) So being in a mentor-mentee relationship is really incredible because you're able to hear um, a perspective from another generation. And I personally believe that life is all about perspective. So being able to have somebody who is there to offer you advice from experiences that they've been through and give you that perspective um, from a totally different point of view is really just invaluable and something that I know that Mel and I both cherish very much. Um, But enough about me. Um, Let's get on to what we're here to talk about. So we can get all the listeners caught up about this. Explain to me the title of your podcast and what is Zigzag and One anyways? Yeah, I know the name is unusual, but I promise it summarizes the purpose and takeaway of the podcast. So let's start with the zigzags. It's the idea that the struggles, I like to call them zigzags, in our lives makes life meaningful. I know (laughs) that this philosophy is completely opposite of how most people view struggles. To them, they want their lives to be this picture perfect, no struggles, no hardships. It's a preconceived notion that that's what we anticipate and almost deserve. But let's be honest, struggles like an unexpected health diagnosis can cost thousands of dollars, beat up your body, and make everyday life challenging. How about an ugly divorce? The process can cripple even the strongest of women. It leaves some feeling like they'll never be able to support their children financially or emotionally. These challenges and many, many others are incredibly hard. But here's the purpose of this podcast. It's here when we dig in and fight those struggles that we learn what we're made of. We learn to push ourselves to get to a better place. And you and I have talked about this a lot. We learn God is truly a man of his word and will be with you every step of the way. Absolutely, yeah. Some even learn that those difficult times in their lives unearthed a passion that they never knew existed. So over the last six years, I've interviewed 75 women who faced various zigs and zags and decided to fight to overcome. Despite their zigs and zags, they kept moving forward. Now, none of those ladies would say that they were happy when those overwhelming struggles happened in their lives. But I believe each one would say they are a stronger and wiser woman because of those struggles or those zigzags. Those strong and courageous women learn many things, but one consistent theme is that those struggles 
brought meaning to their lives. And, you know, going back to perspective, it's really hard to keep that perspective that you're talking about, especially when you're in the middle of one of those zigs and zags, you know, focusing on God and focusing on the lessons and the strength that you're gaining is definitely a challenge to do. And some of those listeners might not know your story, Mel. So tell us a little bit about your personal zigs and zags that you have fought to overcome. I don't know why I'm telling this part, because I think you could probably tell this part. But okay, so I had a stroke that paralyzed my left side when I was two. Back then in 1972, two-year-olds didn't have strokes. People who were 65 years and older were the ones who had strokes. So honestly, I was an anomaly, and they didn't really know what to do with me. But that wasn't just a health struggle or zigzag in my life. It definitely impacted my parents, too. The great thing, and I can look back and I thank them for this all the time, my parents instilled in me a fight to overcome. I had to overcome the lack of fine motor skills in my left hand, my lack of balance, difficulty with retrieving words, and difficulty comprehending what I read. And that's impacted me all of my life. My stroke, or my zigzag, if you will, set me on a path of neurological struggles. So fast forward to my mid-20s when I started having debilitating and unrelenting migraines. You were really little at that point, but your mom remembers really well. Very true. Um, (laughs) Several times a week, I would be put out. Um, Another zigzag, honestly. Because our boys were so young then, Jeff had to help me a lot, and I had to push through and enjoy life with them as much as I could. I didn't want to miss out on their childhoods. I was finally able to get those migraines under control in my late 30s. But then, right before my 40th birthday, I started having mini strokes. And after the fourth mini stroke, my neurologist sent me to a neurosurgeon. Now, you want to talk about a zigzag? Whoever in the world thinks that they will need a brain surgeon? Nobody. <laughs> well, uh, definitely not me. He diagnosed me with Moyamoya disease, which is a rare progressive disease, which was present at my birth. It was what caused... The stroke, the migraines, and the mini stroke. So almost three years ago, March 2nd, it's coming up soon, I underwent brain surgery. Now, you know all the details, but I'm going to spare the listeners those details. But thankfully, that surgery has stopped my health zigzags. Now, fun fact about those who've had brain surgery. Did you know we're called zipper heads? Um, I did not know that term, but I do know you have a really cool zipper. Yes, I do. (laughs) So the teeth of a zipper zipped together definitely look like zigzags. And I'm so thankful for my neurosurgeon. I'm going to give him a big shout out. Dr. Caldy gave me a good looking zipper. That he did. Yes. He did. Now, (laughs) just, just as a side note, no nicknames now that you know this tidbit of information. I won't. I'll spare all of us of the nicknames out of love. Yeah. (laughs) Stick with Mel. How about that? We'll, We'll stick with Mel. But no, I remember your brain surgery day really well. I was actually still in college up in North Carolina and, um, I insisted on coming down, obviously. Um, you've I'm been there so for, glad. <laughs> so glad. You've been there for so many things for me, and there was no way that I wasn't going to, you know, at least be there for as much of this experience as I could. And so um, I remember driving down, and I got there right in time for your pre-op. I got to sit with Jeff and, um, you know, with your parents and everything. And the feeling that we had in the mood of this entire situation, although it was honestly terrifying and I know incredibly stressful for everyone, including you, I know you weren't stressed. No, I wasn't. I was giddy because I was so excited to have hopefully an end game to 45 years of struggle. Right. And we all were just, we were there in prayer with God and the overwhelming feeling and mood of that entire experience was peace, which I think was incredibly powerful for everyone there to experience. Because like I said, although this is something, and you were mentioning that nobody ever imagines happening to themselves or a loved one, um, we all knew that God was there. We felt God there. And we knew that no matter what happened, God had you right? There was nothing that we could do. There was nothing that any of us as humans could, could sit around and do, especially, I mean, I'm not a neurosurgeon, but we were praying and we were there. And the fact that I got to be there and experience that with you was incredibly powerful, especially, you know, for me. Um, 
But if the listeners want to read more about your story, Mel, where can they find it? So they can go to MelanieBrown.com, and I'm going to spell it for you because as much as I love my parents and how they taught me to be a fighter and an overcomer, they wrecked me with the spelling of my name. So I'm going to spell it M-E-L-O-N-Y-B-R-O-W-N.com. So go to MelanieBrown.com and go to the About page. About midway down, there are three links to my story. So as you can tell with my story, it was a little bit of a progression Started in my at age two, and then in the twenties and thirties, and then in the forties, and then the brain surgery. So, because it's my website, I guess I get the privilege of drawing out my story a little bit long. But it's all there, all the details. Perfect. Um, and I know that everybody will be very interested to read that. It's it's truly an incredible story. So we've kind of covered what these these zigzag are, zigzags are and what that kind of means for all of us. Um, tell us what the one means. Yeah, I know. Um, If anybody knows about my ministry, you can kind of make the connection with overcomer and zigzags pretty easily. But the one is probably something that's a little elusive. So let's think of it this way. How many times have you read an article about the 10 best tips to shed 20 pounds in a week or the five best exercises to tone your abs? And a day later, maybe you can remember one or two of those tips. Or how about when you go to church and you hear that standard three-point sermon? I know there have been times when we've been at lunch right after church, and I can't remember even two of the three points. And it's only been 30 minutes since the sermon. No, this happens to me all the time, especially with the ab articles around this holiday time. Uh, I've been looking at probably a few more of those than usual. So, <laughs> yeah. I need to, to get on that with you. Okay, so I don't want listeners to listen And 30 minutes later, forget the message of the podcast. So each guest I interview will briefly share the zigs and zags in her life, as well as how she fought to overcome. Knowing those things will give context for the one thing the guests learned or the one important takeaway from their struggles. Did you catch the one, Avery? I think I did. I think I did. Okay. So (laughs) my hope is when listeners tell their friends about this podcast and an interview they listen to, they can easily remember and share the one thing the guest highlighted. So the one takeaway for today's pre-launch podcast is... When When life life zigs zigs and zags, keep moving forward. Oh, yeah, we did pretty well with that. I like that. It was good. (laughs) So when life zigs and zags, keep moving forward. I believe no matter what life throws at you, you have to keep moving forward. Yes, it's going to be hard. Yes, it's going to take work. And yes, the lessons you are to learn will never come quickly. Usually it's uh, in God's time, and that's tends to be a little bit different than my own time, you know, so (laughs) learning that lesson. I would agree with that wholeheartedly. Confucius says it well when he says, it does not matter how slowly you go so long as you do not stop. So keep fighting, keep trusting God, keep moving forward. So Avery, you shared how you face some zigzags in your journey. We're not going to get into that specifically today, but how did you keep moving forward? Um, As I talked about earlier, I believe and have especially seen recently that I believe that life is all about perspective. Um, So for me, one of the biggest things that I use to move forward is how I view situations. Whenever God puts you in the middle of a zig or a zag, instead of viewing it as a punishment or as like a woe is me, you know, I'm in this horrible situation, I'm in the middle of this struggle. It needs to be viewed as an opportunity to learn and to draw closer to God. And I think that ways that you do that are surrounding yourself with godly people, like through our mentor mentee relationship and good community um, that you can use to help remind you that the situations that you're in are nothing that God has not planned for you. You know, God is using it to grow your faith and using it in the hope that you turn to him not using it as something to put you down or make you feel shame. It's meant to make you feel grateful that God has given you this particular opportunity to either, like I said, grow your own personal faith or to use it to draw others closer to God like we're all called to do. Wow. 
look at you. That little eighth grader's long gone. Gosh, I hope so. Yeah. Yikes. <laughs> All those zigs and zags are maturing you. Hey, you know, if you, I wonder if you don't grow from the situation, um, God will kind of try to teach you the lesson again. So I'm, I'm trying to learn yes, to learn does. the lesson the first, the first time at this point. <laughs> yes, he does. He's good at that. Yes, he, he is. is. But I think the zigzag and one podcast is going to be really impactful. I know that every time your listeners tune in, they'll get to hear your guests talking about the different zigs and zags that they've personally faced. Then you guys will talk about, you know, how they fought to overcome those particular struggles and then make sure to leave one takeaway that listeners can use in their everyday lives. And each episode is going to contain stories and advice from overcomers of all backgrounds and walks of life on an array of topics. And that variety is going to really help all of your listeners to to help every single stage of their life and every different situation that they're going to face. So Mel, going forward, how do listeners get to your podcast to listen to other episodes? So before I get to that, let me just say, that summary tells me that you totally get this podcast, which means that if I ever need to take a break, perhaps you can be the host. What do you say? I am 100% flattered and I would love to meet some of your amazing overcomers. Fantastic. Okay, so how to get to the podcast so as to listen to other episodes. Thanks to my rock star husband, Jeff, who is over there listening right now. With the and fist pump. With the fist pump <laughs> and making sure that we are on track. He has set it up so that you can listen on iTunes, Spotify, or any of the podcast apps. Type in Zigzag in One and scroll to the available episodes. So you can also go to MelanieBrown.com, hopefully I don't need to spell it for you again, uh, and click on the Zigzag in One tab. While you're there, you can check out the other unbelievable Overcomer stories I've already posted. Let's just, I'm just going to name a few so that you can get a taste for, for what those stories are about. These stories are about women who have fought to overcome abuse, eating disorders, alcohol and drug addictions, maybe chronic illnesses. I have a sex trafficking story coming up soon. Um, I even have a 93-year-old Holocaust survivor story. Miss Helen was an incredible lady, just like all the others. So I cannot forget to give a big shout-out to John Gallagher, the man behind the music and the intro for the show. He is the voiceover king, and he jumped in and wanted to help out with the podcast, and it is fabulous. And to Candy Chula for the awesome photography for the podcast image. Now, let's just say there's a story behind that podcast image, and I'll share it one day. But let's just say we probably got in a little trouble that day taking that picture. So definitely share that story at some point. So thank you, John, and thank you, Candy, for your support. And thank you, Avery, for interviewing me for the What is Zigzag and One Anyway episode. This is just the preview of the mini podcasts where we will discuss the zigs and zag life throws at us and how to keep moving forward. So thanks for joining us. Catch the first episode on January the 4th. <laughs>